All right. So I've, cool. done, I've done a bunch in the last few months. So. <laughs> All right. So things cool here with Rachel Gordon. How you doing? I'm good. I mean, I, you know, I'm all, I'm hanging in there. I'm doing all right. I'm trying. I understand you're going through a bit of a trouble. Is that right? I'm going through a, a big trouble. Yeah. Very yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that you did a GoFundMe page, and you're trying to get some money to do uh, another book and put out your album, Paper Doll. Is that right? It's not just for that. It's, it's also to live. Yeah, because, uh, you know, well. You, you you all know that I spent almost 13 years with Ace, um, and Ace took care of me. Um, and uh, yeah, I love Ace. I've spent many many years with Ace, but my life was completely devoted to Ace. Um, when I met Ace, the first thing he said was, "Your job is is with me. I don't want you to do anything else. Your job is going to be with me and taking care of me and traveling with me, and that's that." You know. And, you know, I mean, that was his, he said it in a sweet way, but it, it was no kidding, you know what I mean? I had to learn about what that level of narcissism is right away, you know? And um, so that's what I've done. I've been on a really short leash. I've never had my own cards. I've never had my own money. It was very, anything I wanted or needed was taken care of. I was handed cash and never any, you know, the exact amount that whatever it was cost, whether it was the doctors or, anything and he would monitor everything i did and wherever i went to so i you know i didn't know this was going to happen it's the second time he's relapsed but um you know uh this is what's happened I've, I've i'm left with his bills his debts his i was left in the mansion with absolutely nothing now now what is that so like to send, he said i could sign over two of the cars that were mine to him, I only own the cars and the furniture, so I signed two cars over to him. He gave me twenty k. That was it. That moved me out of the mansion. That paid some of the bills that he left behind for me. He just walked out. I was threatened by a bodyguard very violently in our home. He was on. He was loaded out of his mind. I got um. So I had to. That's that's not very much. When I had to move to a weird area where he couldn't find me, I had to um, do all that. Get you know, get to clean the house out. You know, he left every. He walked out of a four. You know, the four car garage was full. Everything. He just walked away, and there was no fight. I didn't know what was going on. Now, what is that like for someone who has been in that kind of relationship to be basically starting over again? Well, um, I don't. I'm never afraid of change or anything. As far as like just you know having, I've always been a. Uh, you know, I've always been a, a person who who likes to move and do things, and you know, I, I'm a very creative person. I'm an artist, and you know, I toured with my first album already. I'd been to Europe several times before Ace, and you know, I always I worked since I was 14 years old, and um, really hard. I didn't come for money. I was never handed anything. I was never given a car. I was never, you know. It's not a sob story at all, you know. It's emergency help because um, it's it was, a, you know, it happened in a in a in a second, and um, and to to have everything, to have a man that that you're engaged to publicly and in any in every single aspect, and you never leave his side for that long, for almost 13 years, and he promises you that you'll never ever have to worry, and you do everything for him for that. For all of a sudden him to just go swipe and then you're and you know and threaten your life as well and have other people I've had my life threatened several times by people he knows um, and friends of his that I consider family all of a sudden and so it was really frightening. The frightening thing is that you know not not if I had the money and I moved you know that's not frightening. That's just moving and. Then and being myself, you know, figuring out, wow, I would, okay, instead of taking care of somebody else, I'm going to take care of myself right now, which I, it's not like I can't do, but I've got to remember to, you know, I want to do my album and take care of me now. Now, do you still have the restraining order out? He had it lifted. Wow. Although every single thing uh, that happened to scare me enough to put that restraining order on was all admitted to the judge. Every single bit of it was was 
admitted to the judge. It was it was insane, and it was fixed. It was ridiculous, and I knew it would be. But um, you know, and I was on the news, the local news, talking about it. They called me and wanted me to come to talk about it. There's a lot of a lot of women are being treated the way I'm being treated in in the industry, and are you know what do you do? It's just the same as being with a prize fighter. It's being or you know. Uh, a gangster, whatever it is, you can't get out and nobody can get in. You're very isolated and you're promised everything, but you are, you gotta stay where you stay. You're on a short leash. You know what I mean? There's nobody to talk to that you can trust. There's nobody to cry to. There's nobody to, Ace and I had each other and I took care of him and I love him and I do worry and I'm very, very worried. Very worried. Not, you know, there's not too many people in this world that can take care, that are gonna understand how he needs to be taken care of. So that's all I'm going to say about that. No, I understand you originally wrote a book in 2016, and, and Ace actually threw that out. Is that right? That's very right, yeah. And you're going to write another book? Or are you going to touch on the what was covered in the first one, or what's, what's the new book going to be? The first book was, um, you know, he didn't want me to work. He didn't want me to do anything. He always said he'd say things. We'd go on vacation and he'd say, you know, if, if he was in a good mood, you know, I want to help you do all the things you do. I want to help you do a second album. I want to help you do what you want to do because you, you do everything and you've done everything to help me. And you do backups and you write me songs and you, you're so helpful for me. I want to help you. But it never worked out and he never would. And if I brought it up, I even have recordings of me talking about it and him saying, no, I'm not talking about it with you. And him saying, you know, well, I'm the rock star of the house and that kind of business, you know, and you're not. Like, there's any comparison. There's no comparison. It's ridiculous. Me and a huge rock icon, you know. But he didn't want me to do what I wanted to do. And I, I wanted to write a, a book that just had to do with my, you know, kind of Amy Sedaris way of looking at things, my my silliness and my drawings because I'm an artist and, and my just my uh, literature and stuff like that. And he said, okay, write one. He said, write one, and uh, I'll find someone to publish it. I'll get it done. So I wrote it quicker than he could believe. I only wrote it, and it took me like a couple months, and it was written, and it was in a folder, and it was on his desk. And he said, I'll take care of it tomorrow. Then he didn't. Uh, a couple months went by. He said, find some, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know who's going to do it. A anyway, long story short, when we, we moved out of the penthouse into a home in Rancho Santa Fe, I said, where is it? And he said, it probably got thrown out. And then later on that night, he said, yeah, I did get thrown out. I threw it out. So there you go. So this book, answering your question, um, no, this, this this book is 13 years with Ace. And I count, and I say 13 because it was, I count the year that I met him, 2008, because he called me day and night, and he called me at all hours of the day and night, um, you know, telling me he was lonely and crying and I was really get, I was wrapped up in, I was already wrapped up in, in him before I was you know before I was physical with him before I was really seeing him dating him now when did the relationship start to sour um pardon me when did the relationship start to sour like when uh when did things it start didn't. it didn't I mean he was always abusive and that's that is he was always abusive um, always. Uh, we never had, we never had a hard, we never had a, a breakup. In, in 2018, he relapsed and got very, very violent, extremely, you know, nuts and was taking a deadly cocktail of different ups and downs and that was what did it and I was very afraid and I went everywhere with him and, um, and uh he took off for a he took off for a tour without me i he left me at the home um he he had been he had a weird affair with somebody he was gone for a couple of months then he came home and he said i'm strung out i'm strung out and he was crying and he was sorry and he's like I'll, I'll never do that to you again and this and this and this and i and i nursed him back to health and um he said, I'm fucked up again, I'm strung out, you know, and I forgave him, and I nursed him back to health, literally, in every way, and then, you know, we got on with our life, and I didn't think he would ever do anything like that again, especially at his age, and he did. And he blames it on everything else, and, and, and there is no, that's just not the way it is. 
he said uh, this last time, he said, stay home. It's going to be a real rough tour. I want you to rest because when I get home, we're going to move. We were planning on moving to a mansion that was like one door down. I said, okay. And I said, a rough tour? What do you mean? And he just said, it's going to be. I want you to get your rest. And he came home just completely, just, in you know, in outer space. Couldn't look me in the eye. Was grinding his teeth. I don't, I mean, I can't even, I don't even know what, uh, what exactly he's on, to tell you the truth. I know some of the things. But, and I know he's not drinking alcohol, but I do know that he takes a deadly cocktail of pills day and night. What what kind of pills? Um, oh, you know, it, it, I don't know if I should be saying that in the interview. You know what I mean? Okay. No, I was just, just, um, curiosity on my own level. I mean, deadly is, is just what I'm going to say, you know, deadly is, is a deadly cocktail of pills. It's a bad one, you know. Right? Yeah, definitely. I'm not not good. Now, do you think? And, that, uh, and that's not slandering him either. That's the truth coming from somebody who I've been his fiance for, you know, since late 2008. That's the truth. Do you think this relapse might have had something to do with him not being part of the Kiss Farewell tour? Very much. Yeah, very, very much. I think he's upset. I think he's angry. Um, you know, he he did his. You know he 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 uh, he's he's not reliable when he's like this. You know, and it started happening in 2008, and he'd have these weird blow up temper temper fits that were pretty scary. And then he wouldn't remember the next day, and then he'd cry the next day, and he'd be sorry. But um, and then it, it, this this last when he just left this last time, um, he was trying to blame me, and I said, look, I got nothing to do with it. I said the reason that you're not on it is because you can't be you you cannot be they can't rely on it they can't rely on you when you're like this they, nobody's at the age, you guys aren't at the age where they, you know everyone needs to be they need to rely on you you know after all this slander about Tommy Thayer I met the guy on the Kiss cruise he was the one of the nicest people I've ever met completely nice completely sober you know he's not Ace he's Tommy though but he can be relied on you know. Now, you say that uh, your relationship was full of arguments and things like that. Um, you think there's a chance that you guys might reconcile? Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, he, he walked out, you know. He's the one that walked out, and he's the one that walked out on... He's he's the one who it's the second time he's done this. I can't chase around, you know, a sixty nine year old man who's, you know, acting like he's twenty five and might wrap a car around a telephone pole. I, I don't I you know, I don't know what to say or do about that. Of course I love Ace if you know, if 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 the fans wanna know that. Thirteen years is a long time. Who's gonna take care of him? You know, he can he can he, he he doesn't like to be alone. That's the first thing I met. First first thing I knew about Ace and learned about Ace when I first met him immediately was that he doesn't like to be alone. I cannot be alone. He said, "I do not want to be alone. I can't. I can't. Please, you know." And I didn't. I don't want anybody to be alone. I'm a natural nurturing person. I didn't want anybody to be alone. No, I didn't want this man to be alone. And, and the more I got to know him, <clears throat> and that's why I made him wait almost a year, is because I need to know somebody. But um, I didn't certainly, I didn't, you know, I thought I'm, I can help him and I want to be with him. And, yeah, I fell madly in love with him and wanted to be with him and and help him. And I, and I wanted to help him do, do right and be healthy and have, for once, a healthy lifestyle and a healthy kind of a life, you know, going to the beach. Going, going on drives, going to the desert, you know, going to all the, doing all the things that he's flown planes over that he hasn't really seen. And we did. And he thanked me almost every day of his life for being in his life. When was the last time you guys spoke? The last time we spoke was right after the trial. Right after the trial, I was um, with some friends and I was eating and I got a call from him. It's, he the, the restraining order was lifted. He called, completely crying, um, and just flipping out and crying and saying, "I'm not happy. I just want you to know I'm not happy." You know. And I said, "Well, look, you've got to take care of me. You know, this has been a long time. You know, you've got to at least help me with this and this." And 
he just cried and cried and hung up. And, you know, what I, I'm guessing is that he was completely surrounded by what we call yes people. Yes people are all the people on the payroll, all the people surrounding him, whether it's, it doesn't matter who it is, but they're, they're, they're going to agree with every single thing that the rock star says, period. Or the actor says, or whoever that's agree with it. So, so now I, he wouldn't let you do music or anything like that when you're with him and the new album paper. He let me do music if it had to do with him. Um, writing him songs and doing backups and doing all that. Yeah. So you'd write songs for him? I wrote two songs out and out for him. I wrote Immortal Pleasures and Pleasures and I wrote, um, Change and I wrote, uh, two other ones, but he decided to use those right away. I thought of him doing Lola on this past album covering that. I've done all, I've done a lot of backup vocals and harmonies. He'd wake me up at the penthouse at 4 a.m. and say, you know, come in here and do these harmonies and these back vocals, you know, and all that stuff. And I don't mind doing that at all. That's fun for me, you know? Right, right. Um, I don't mind doing that. That's, you know, but yeah, I mean, you know, as far as my own thing, he wouldn't let me do it. So in 2018, when he left and I was alone at the mansion, I was flipped out. One of his friends was threatening my life and literally saying that I had a hit on me. And to go to Catalina, I was having a nervous, I, I mean, I felt really flipped out. This was a man that I regarded like an uncle, like I, I thought of him like a family member. And all of a sudden he was telling me this. And um, some friends of mine in Los Angeles said, get up here. We, you know, we have some songs for you. Come up and record this album and get out of there and, and get out of it your head for a minute and do something good and make some music and and that's what I did I went up and recorded an album he would never have let me do it and then when when he came home and he was sorry um he said I want to be a piece of it I want to I want to I'm going to co-produce it he insisted I'm going to co-produce it he said I want to co-produce it and that's that and um you know and then we did a duet on it which turned out really great and um and we were really proud of it and it's really good with a hit song he had in the 70s and um so that's how it went and he promised to shop labels for it and everything and of course he didn't you know a lot of broken promises there the new album that you have paper doll is that completed or yeah the album's completed the album is completed i did a an interview with argentina about it and it's been completed for a year or something it's it's a it's a great pop album. I'm very proud of it. I I would, you know, we were just getting ready to figure out the cover and and Ace was shopping labels and then things started to go really bad with him taking what he was taking and spinning out of control and and you know believe me that was an Ace that I was not used to at all. So what's going to be the next step? Are you planning on doing some Spotify or releasing it yourself or? Shopping around. I don't know. I I need to shove it around for labels. Um, yeah, E1 was interested. Ken was interested, and of course that's Ace's label. So I never heard back from them. Um, I mean, you know, that's what I I'm a singer. You know what I mean? That's what I that's what I do, and I can sit in with other people, and I can do this, and I can do that. But really, I want my second album to come out. I'm really excited about it, and a lot of work went into it, a lot of love, and I love. Ken Sharp, who wrote the songs, and and except for the covers that I did on it, and then I love Fernando Perdomo, who's the guitar player on it, um, and you know, and the stuff that Ace did on it was real is really fantastic, and I'm and I'm excited about it, you know, and um, so uh, I don't, yeah, I got to shop labels, shopping labels. So Ace is on this album. Yeah, he and I did a duet together with a song. He had a hit with in the seventies, yeah, and it turned out really good. I taught Ace, at, you know, I taught Ace how to sing from his diaphragm when we lived at the penthouse in about two thousand sixteen or seventeen. Um, when I wrote "Immortal Pleasures and Change," he said, "I can't sing that. I can't sing like that, Poodle." He said, "He called me Poodle. I can't sing like that, Poodle." I said, "Yes, you can." I said, "Yes, you can." And so I, I taught him one of all the stuff that um, I learned. I've always sang since I was two years old, but I did learn some tricks from um, an opera singer when I was singing in a rock and roll band in, in my late twenties. And I learned these exercises, and I taught Ace how to sing from his diaphragm. 
and it, he was blown away. He cried. He was like, I, I can't believe how good my voice sounds. And he did, all of a sudden, this deep voice count came out of Ace, and I was really proud, and he was really proud, and it sounds it sounded really great, you know? So with all the connections that you made throughout the years, uh, none of them are willing to help you, or they're turning your back now because of Ace? That's a scary thing, and that goes out to all the women that are probably, you know, all the women that could be in my same situation, um, controlled by a powerful person in the industry. And um, what happens to you is this, um, you know, read, you, you should, you know, if you ever read in the biographies of these women, it, here's what happens. You know, um, as soon as the rock star turns on you, it could be over anything, it could be over uh Anything, anything at all or, or over nothing. But when they, you know, all the people that are, that you call family, that tell you that you're like family, that, you know, that consider you family, all the people that guard you, take care of you, uh, rub your neck when you're on an overnight flight, all these people, all of a sudden, they can't talk. All of a sudden, they don't answer their phone. All of a sudden, you just don't exist. This is, it's like a ghosting. You know, it's just like this weird, all of a sudden, you just do not exist. To people that have said they love you, you're like family, you've been with them all the time, they're in your life directly, you know? I mean, people that you've, that have stayed in our home, that have, you know, done laundry for bodyguards, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, these people, all of a sudden, are, are, they, they turn on you it, it, because they're going to go with boss, doesn't matter, right or wrong. You know? Now, you know, here's one thing I want to ask you. I mean, what about the backlash that you're receiving from fans? I mean, in their mind, it's kiss. I'm not reading it. I'm you know, not I mean, reading it. It's, you know. It's, it's, you know, I'm just one of those things where, you know, I, in their mind, they he can do no wrong because he was part of kiss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there's some videos that they should watch about him saying some things that aren't so nice. They need to do a little bit of homework, but they, but then again, you know what? I listen. The fans want Ace to be the 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 hero that they know him to be, that they that they love since they were kids, or kids that love him now. You know, they want they. He has. I used to tell him, "You've got a really big job. Is you're not just you're not only you guys aren't just rock, rock and roll stars." I said, "You aren't." I said, "You guys are are." Um, superheroes, you know, you guys are cartoon characters, you guys are larger than life, you know, you guys are, you have a bigger job, and you have, it's your job, you know, being a rock star and a hero, especially a superhero and a rock star, that is a job that you have to do, you've got to set a huge example, and I noticed when I was with Ace, a lot of the fans loved me, Ace used to say it, Ace used to say, hey, Goodle, you know what, my fans love you, you know, they, I was never with a woman that that my fans, you know, loved as much as you, you know. And he'd say mean things to me. He'd say, when they ask you where you got your dress, don't fucking tell them. And I'd say, why? Why? I I love your fans. I don't want to act like that. I want to tell them where I got it so that they can go get it. I want to act, you know, I want to be a human toward them. And, and that's why the fans that love me do love me because I am um, just a girl that grew up at the beach that, you know, was with a rock star. I am like that. Um, I'm not a snob, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, so anyway, what, what were we just talking about? I'm sorry, there's, there's a lot going on. You, um, you were talking about uh, fans and their idea of, of Kiss. and. Oh, yeah, so I, I, I really, it, this is very serious, you know. I used to say, Ace, you have, it's very, very serious that what you, that the message that you get across and the way you live your life and the way you come off is, is positive and very healthy because because there are people. Or I said you're not just national; you're international. There are people. There are people that have nothing that look up to you. If you drink or you you know you mess up and you take drugs, they're they're going to think it's all right. If you stay sober, they're going to they're going to take after that. And they're and and the fans are like, I can't tell you how many hundreds and thousands of fans have said over the years, I'm sober because of Ace. Me and my wife are sober because of Ace. You know, if it wasn't for Ace, we would—I never would be sober. And this and this and this. You know, so he—he he has an example. He's got—he's got to set a good example, and just fly, just doing what he wants, 
um, being lackadaisical with a guitar, you know, moving from a, a good woman who really, really, truly loved him for the person he was, not the stupid carpets, not the stupid, not the status, and not any of that bullshit, because I'm not about that. A woman who really lo- saw who he, you know, saw him as a little boy in the Bronx who was watching a, um, you know, sci-fi movies, you know, left all alone and, you know, and that, and which is what I wrote Immortal Pleasures about. I wrote that song about Ace growing up wanting to be a superhero and getting a chance to be a superhero and actually getting to be one. But, um, it's, it's important that superheroes fulfill their job and, and show everyone that they, you know, are, are they really are larger than life in a good way, you know, right. so that other, their fans follow. Now, at the beginning of the, your answer here, you said the fans should watch some videos. What videos are you talking about? Well, they can find those if they look look them up. You know, there's some surveillance camera ones. You know, I mean, everybody kind of knows what it is. Anyone who knows that I, that I, anybody who knows who kisses, any adults who know who kisses know that I, that it was that, you know, honestly, being with Ace is a job. It's it's exciting. It's it was fun, exciting. It could be romantic. It could also be the most frightening thing in the world. It was also scary. It was also uncertain. It was also an emotional being an emotional punching bag, you know, all around the world in hotel rooms, in airport lounges, in restaurants, you know, it's also that. It's like being with a prize fighter, only then instead of getting out of the ring, they're getting off of the rock and roll stage, you know? Right, right. Now, yeah. do you think there's a chance that uh, you might get Ace some help? I mean, you're saying that he's taking pills all the time. and I would be that help, you know? I mean, I don't know about that because I don't know, you know, I mean, rock stars that are his age, and this is a fact, they don't want to be psychoanalyzed, you know. They're done with all that. They don't want to. They don't want to. You know. They, first of all, they don't want to admit to any problems that they have with that substance abuse problem. Um, they don't want to admit to any of their faults. They're used to somebody else cleaning up all their anything, you know, that they've messed up, you know, and um, and that's just kind of what goes on in their mind. You know what I mean? Like they don't need this. They don't need anything. They can do anything. They're kind of invincible. And and the unfortunate thing is that no matter what happens, and Ace did stop drinking, and I'm going to give him this. He's never once talked about alcohol, wanted alcohol, craved alcohol, never been. He just he has been to meetings. He ha- he really doesn't. He really doesn't want alcohol ever again. Never since I met him, it hasn't been you know anything like that. So. But a lot of a lot of addicts and and famous people that are addicts think that you know if they went to rehab and they or they went to AA or NA and they stop one thing, then if they do the other thing, they're still sober. For instance, you know he he had a bad drinking problem. He quit drinking, and that's good, you know. But that doesn't mean that he's sober if he's still pounding a handful of God knows what. He's not, you know. Right. And 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 if it were drugs, and he started drinking, he'd say, "No, I'm sober." You know, that's, that's the way rock stars do. Well, you know, and the ones that had a heroin problem out in the world, they're like, "Well, I quit heroin." You know, I'm just doing, and then they're drinking. You know, and they're going, "No, I'm sober." So it kind of works like that. They don't see it. They don't want to see it. They don't want anyone else to notice it. And they still, they could be in their 60s or 70s and still think it's 1975, and they're invincible. And I mean, they're invincible. Sorry, invincible. They're invincible, and they're and somebody else is right there to pick up whatever they drop or mess up, and they can do what they want, and it, and they still have that way of thinking. No, well, hard to get through to them. What made you want to do the GoFundMe page? Um, well, I'm scared to death. I I first of all, Ace offered to help. First of all, when this all first happened. He, uh, and he came home a, a mess. Uh, he, he texted me bef- before he picked up some clothes. He texted me and he said, get a, get a place, get a, get a, get a place in Palm Springs. And that sounds ideal. 
and then uh, I'll come out on the weekends, and we'll and it'll be and we'll have a lot of fun and this and this and this and this. And when he came around and ambushed the house, and he did things like he, you know, had someone threaten me, and he came by and he was uh, grabbing me and yanking me around the house and being belligerent while he was picking up some clothes, and then I'd say, well, why aren't you picking up all your clothes? And he would say. I'll pick him up in time, and he was just being really. Uh, when I put the restraining order on him, um, I'm learning about narcissism, and it's it, that is something that made him really angry because the narcissism that that Ace has is is controlling narcissism. Control is a gigantic part of it, and I took his control away from him. Putting that there made him go, "Oh, really?" And he sent me these texts going, "Hey." You get this off now. Call me now. Call me right now, you know. And he, you know, like all of a sudden he didn't have control over me. So it made him mad. So then he didn't want to help. He was going to be like a child and run and not do anything, you know. Right. And when I ran out of money and um, and it's quick and all of a sudden I can't pay the rent, it doesn't, you know, people out there in the world who don't know what my life has been like and my job has been like with Ace and what I've done and everything, because I'm a very ambitious person. I'm just artistically driven. Um, I could run out and pound the pavement and get some kind of job at, you know, waiting tables at a truck stop diner or something like that. That's not going to help me um, be able to do, catch, be able to catch up with everything he left me with. Now, I, there was a lawsuit over that. Uh, is that still going on, or is that done? Um, I'd rather not discuss that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, people want to help you out. They want to go to the GoFundMe page. They Maybe there's somebody listening that wants to help do something with the album or get something released. Where's where do they Where do they go? What do they do? Um, it depends who reaches out. It depends on if it's a label. Um, somebody like that would would be a label or someone who's linked to a label or someone who knows a label that, you know, because, you know, I need to be signed to a label. So that would have to be that, you know, someone who's either a label or represents one or connected to one. Right, right. Or what and I'm... then they would know what to do. Okay. I mean. And for the people that you want to donate to your GoFundMe, um, is there mm-hmm. a certain link or uh, do they just search it's going to my rabbi and it and there is a link on there where it goes there's a link where they can send it to there's a direct there's a direct um thing that's been set up for me and when can we expect some of the songs to be out maybe release one or two or you oh, can wait till God, i can't wait till it i really want them to be out there so bad it's really just I mean, it's really eating me up that I can't. I want to just. I thought maybe I'll just put a couple out and do a single, but um, but the guys that I did the album with are, and uh, who are my close friends are pretty. You know, we're we're all adamant about just no. It's got to be the album. It's got to be the, the whole thing. You know, and and giving part of it away would wouldn't be wouldn't be a good thing. I, it should just be the album. You know, and right. I can't wait. I I really want to put it out. I'm proud of it, and I want to put it out. You know, it's my little masterpiece, and it's their masterpiece too. And I'm proud of the whole thing. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to hearing some of it for sure. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, um, anyway, um, yeah, I'm I'm in a pretty scary position right now because in two weeks, if I I can either pay the rent or a little under two weeks, pay the rent or leave. And I have I haven't found a place. Um, it took every dime that I had, which was you know I had to give up a couple cars to Ace. He wasn't even he hasn't been a gentleman to me about any of this. And I've for the as long as I've been with him, I've literally selflessly done every single thing that I could do for Ace. And he's done a lot for me. You know um, I'm not saying he hasn't. I'm just saying I've I've you know, his ask, the things he does creatively are fulfilled, and it hasn't been fair that mine haven't, you know. I'm not saying life's fair either. I'm not, it's not a, I'm not giving a sob story. I'm just saying I need to be able to be Rachel Gordon, and that needs to be nurtured. And when there's a couple, it needs to be 100% on both ends, 100% on his end and my end. 
Um, it can't just be 100% on my end. And then, you know, I'm getting rewarded with, with um, clothing and, and nice things to wear so that he will look good on a carpet, which is what happens. We get back and he'd say, thanks for making me look good. You make me look good, poodle. Well, it's not just all about that. You know, I'm a woman with a, I'm a human being with a mind and I have a hell of a mind and I'm very creative and I'm, you know, I collect antiques and do the house and everything and there wasn't, the, the, the praise was always about him, you know what I mean? It was always good, you're making me look good, the house looks good, so and so is coming over. Uh, and then they'd come over and he'd say, see, look how she decorates and then, you know, it, it, I just felt like I was giving every single thing but my, he was not, caring at all about what I wanted to do, you know? Now, now let's say Ace hears this interview. What's the one thing that he's you going want? to, what, what's he's going to hear it for sure. What's the one thing you want to say to him? Um, well, um, I want to say that I'm worried. I want to say that I love him and I want to say, you know, please let's talk. Please, please help after 13 years and let's talk without anybody let's talk without phones let's talk without assistance let's talk without anybody else in the room let's just talk uh in a dignified civilized way that two people that were together for that many years inseparably that loved each other can should should talk it's it's this is a divorce this is this is what it is it's common law marriage even though they don't call it common law in california anymore it's the same thing it's it's Palimony, Marvin Act, all that stuff. It's, it's, you know, you were together, we were together well over seven years, almost, you know, over a decade, inseparably, everywhere, and we need to talk, you know, not let everyone else do the damn talking, you know. It needs, to, he needs to help me and make sure that I'm, that I, that I can happily do my album and, uh, you know, all this, I don't want anything to be ugly. That's the thing. I don't, I, I don't want anything to be ugly. I don't want that. I never did. And I've only tried to help him. I've only tried to, to help Ace. And there's going to be those people out there that are going to get mad or whatever, but there's going to be those that believe in me too and understand what I'm saying. You know? Yeah. Definitely. You can't do anything about people that are going to be uh, negative online. You can't do anything about people that don't believe you that they are going to say horrible things. You never can. You know what I mean? No, I mean, that's the one thing about the Internet. I mean, these people, uh, they'll bash their icons. They'll bash what they don't know, unfortunately. I mean, they, yeah, they will. They'll turn around and bash anybody. They, they, those kinds of people you can't do anything about. And half the time, those people are on the payroll, believe it or not, you know. I have to say, half of those people are in the camp on the payroll, making up accounts, taking sides. And, you know, there's no winning. It's really difficult. It's not, just, and it's been like this with throughout history. It's been like this with, you know, many many actors' wives, and you know, many many wives that have been with um, huge rock stars. You know, if it goes wrong, where are they now? Where do they end up? You know, I mean, you know, I was thinking about that this morning. I was just like, God, you know, I was thinking about this wife, that wife, this girlfriend, that girlfriend. You know how they, the, the time you put in and stuff. And um, and the caring, and, you know, I dried Ace's tears. He cries a lot, you know, and I would dry his tears every night, you know, and, and hold him and take care of him and love him and give him everything I have, you know, every single thing, every bit of information, every bit of, of, of affection and um, and anything I can do, I, I gave of my heart 24 hours a day and everything else, you know, and and then you just go, where are, where are all these women? These women disappear. Where are they? You know, and they do. They disappear. You know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not disappearing, so I imagine, I imagine there's some people that are a little nervous about that. But you know what? Um, yeah, I'm too smart for that. I'm not going anywhere, and I intend on getting that album out. And if I have to ask people for help, you know, which is something I'm pretty prideful about, I didn't like it at first. I didn't. I saw it as being like. You know, something that I'm not, because I've worked my ass off since I was 14 years old. I come from a family of tile setters. Nobody had any money. Like I said, I was never given a car or I never had nice clothes. None of that stuff. You know, I worked for everything I had my whole life. 
And um, so I didn't feel good about it at first. And then second, I went, you know, I've got to do this. And, you know, there's a lot of people that would understand where I'm coming from, you know, because you're so isolated when you're with a famous person. You're very, very isolated. You're isolated for years and years from your family, from your friends. I don't have any family left, you know what I mean? Um, I live in this house alone. I don't have family left. My mother died the year I met Ace. Um, everyone in my family has gone. Uh, so I don't have any help, and I've been isolated from most of my friends who are starving artists themselves. My friends, you know, they're all musicians and artists themselves, and they, they can barely make ends meet. But I've been isolated, and like my friends are telling me, you've been in Ace World for so long. You know, we'd come over there, and you were so unwrapped in what he wanted or him calling you that you couldn't even come in the guest room and visit me because, you you know, you were busy, like, running out, running around the house, doing what he needed you to do, getting yelled at, you know, and that, it's true. It's like raging bull, <laughs> you know, and that's the truth, you know, and I, and I love that guy. I love Big Lug. I love him very much, but I need help right now, and it's, you, you've got to be civilized. You've got to help the woman that you've been with for that long. That's, that's done everything womanly possibly possible and everything humanly possible that she has to give and done everything she can do for you, you know? Well, I mean, I hope things work out for you. It sounds like it's been well, a, thank you. a rough, Thanks. rough time for you. It's been really rough, sure. I mean, I've it's been very, very rough. People, like, you know, I get weird people in strange places walking up to me and it's uncomfortable. It's, it's you don't know, you know. My li- like I said, my life has been threatened a lot, and um, and that's not a good feel. That's not a good feeling for, you know, for a little chick like me to be walking around in the world with my life threatened. You know, all of a sudden there's there. It, you know, it's one thing when you know if you're with someone like that and your life's threatened, then Ace would say, you know, I'm gonna fuck them up. That's it. You know, it, well when you're not with that person anymore, you have no, you know. <laughs> That's that's difficult. That's scary for you. Now, are the people you get weird you calls? You get because of Ace or from Ace? That's um, right. both. Not because not no not it's it's because of not because of the breakup. Um, no 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 no. This is like uh. Well, I'd rather not get into it. It's too it's too weird and it's too scary. It's too sketchy. You know? I wanna get I wanna try and sleep tonight and you know, I wake up five times a night with my heart just like pounding out of my chest, you know, I have PTSD from this. I didn't need it. I was I went to the hospital when I first started seeing Ace in two thousand nine, um, because it was the first time he lost his temper at me and told me that some people he knew wanted to slit my throat. Now, I just moved in with this guy. I was in love. I had a ring on my finger. I was decorating the house, and he took off, and then, um, you know, I was so upset. I ended up with, like, a nervous exhaustion and dehydration, and they said trauma. from. And what Cedar sinai said was, well, this is very normal for a beautiful girl like yourself to be, you know, your your mother just passed away and you're with a very, very big icon, you know, a big rock star. And this kind of thing happens. And I was just like, what? You know, I just didn't understand. But, you know, now, I understand now. Now, I'm, do now, a lot of people say things in the heat of the moment. Do you think he would actually follow up on any of those threats? You mean like admit to what I just said? Like, oh, oh, oh! You mean actually hurt me? Yeah, I mean, are you? No. Like, I mean, are you actually? No, you know, I understand. No, you have I to, do not that think Ace fight, would be at all. Okay, that's what I'm getting at. Like, you don't think like? No, Ace. There's Ace, not really a, a hit out out there, so to speak. Ace loves me. There, there could, there's been hits out on me, and there could very well be. But Ace, I know one thing, and that is that. Um, well. You know what? There's drugs involved. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I know that Ace loves me, and I know that he would protect me, and I do not think that Ace, would, Ace himself would allow someone to hurt me. I think he knows people that would, period. There's not even I think. He does. He does know people that would. There are people that would, period. 
So are, are you afraid of that, or you, I mean, do you think it's like you know? I, it's, not, it's not making me. <laughs> it's not making me really comfortable. Uh, it never did. No, it's frightening. Well, I mean, yeah, that's definitely got to be a, a scary feeling. I mean, especially if you got 2018. If his friend told me to go to Catalina that day, he called. I said, "What?" Ace was gone. He was a, a wreck. I he was, you know, um, and I, this man that I was calling my uncle, this man named Buddy, a friend of an old friend of Ace's who lost all of his money, uh, drugs, you know. I don't know how he got it in the first place, but I, you know, I got a few guesses. Right? He was a very, very, very extremely wealthy man and lost it all. But he was, he'd come to our house and he was like a Joe Pesci kind of character, you know, like a, but he was like uncle style to me, you know, like I love you, never let anything happen to you. All of a sudden he was calling me at my house on my cell phone a couple, two days straight, 2018, saying, listen to me, I want you, there's a hit out on you. You you need to get out of there and get to Catalina. Get to Catalina now. Now. Listen to me right now. And he called me Poodle, too. Listen, Poodle. Get to, You're going to connect call. I want you in Catalina. And you call me and you tell me what hotel you're at. You go by yourself. You're going to relax. I mean, it was like, you know, a Scorsese movie. It was like, you're going to relax. You're going to get some sun. You'll get away. It's going to be good for you. Call me when you're there. Well, I was in a double-gated community called the Bridges, and I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving the house. You know, they want to come and get me. I know who it was, too. I said, then tell them, you know, because we've got guards here that aren't going to let that happen. Tell, and he said, well, I admire your, your guts, Poodle, but, you know, it's serious shit we're talking about here. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? You know, and then Ace came home, and I told Ace, and he said, Son of a bitch and flipped out, threw his boot across the room, flipped out, went in the other room where he thought I couldn't hear him, but he's deaf and he's got, it was got the phone on speaker phone. Called up Buddy and said, what are you doing telling her that? What are you doing doing that? You know, you don't do that. Did I tell you to do that? Did I tell you to, to tell her that? You know, so it was that. I don't know who, I don't know if he knew. I don't know what was going on. But, um, that when that happens to you, it's really scary. Yeah. It's real and it's scary. It's not just the movies, folks. It's not real. Well, I mean, hopefully uh, you're taking the precautions and everything should be on track for you. I am. I have some people protecting me. I'm protected. Um, you know, but then again, if somebody really wants to get you, I guess they can, right? That's That's really what Ace always told me. But, um, I don't know. I, I, geez, cross your fingers, you know. I'd like to get my album out. Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd love to hear that album. Uh, hopefully, uh, everything turns around for you. I hope, uh, you know, Ace listens to this, and hopefully you guys might be able to, uh, reconcile or at least move past. Well, I hope so. I hope so too. I don't know, you know. Um, I have, I, I, you know, my, it's, there's so many things going through my head right now. You know, I just need help so I can move and, um, and then I'm going to move, get my head together and get this album out one way or another. You know, there's been some interest and, um, you know, when you're, when there's no food in the refrigerator and there's no one to call to borrow money from and there's no, you know, it's kind of hard for you to, to think about who, you know, calling people for your album right right well i mean you know let's go fund me is a good start i i think it's gonna i'm four chapters into the book so well there you go i got the book you got the album i hope hopefully everything goes back on track for you i wish the best for you well thanks thanks a lot and you have a really good evening you too take care thank you again all right you're welcome bye-bye bye, -bye. Bye.